dead anyway, and they tended to be the um, the, the soldiers. Um, but they would entertain themselves along the way by seeing how far, by competing with each other, how far they could hit the slither with the, the thing. And then they would go get it, and then, you know, then they'd go get that one, and then they'd hit another one. And then they didn't notice a few miles passing by. Oh, is that kind of how golf came huh? to, Maybe golf, too? Was it might have been. It might have been, but it, 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 it might have been something, it would have been along that line, mm -hmm. except that they refined it and sort of made all kinds of rules of, out of it. And as you know, it was a gentleman's game, right? And when they started, when they opened their first golf course in St. Andrews in um, club in Scotland, <coughs> they had a sign up, which was G, you know, uh, dot O L dot. And it stood for gentlemen only, ladies forbidden. No, unfortunately, it's not. Uh, Aria, we, we gave them the shoes, Aria, and it was all over. Are you recording Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. And look at that. There's only three guys here. It wasn't the voice. It was, it was way too late by then. <laughs> I know Aria. No, we 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 could get into trouble. Well, they have pubs in Scotland that ladies don't go in the right yeah. place. Well, there's still um, country clubs back east in America, which says uh, Ir no Irish no Irish allowed, Irish forbidden. So you know, discrimination is. Uh, well, well, I, I doubt. It. I think it's probably there more now as a. Um, just as a, as a historical little little thing, but but that does that. I, did you ladies know that? Did you know you didn't know that? I'm not making it up. That is the true genesis of the name golf. You know, you know. We're not surprised. Yeah, gentlemen only, ladies forbidden. Yeah. yeah. Well, when you. Yeah. I believe it though because I was years ago. I was at a couple of pubs in Ireland. I went in with a girlfriend that I was traveling with, and we got a lot of stares from the men, like, what are you doing here? This is a forbidden area. Well, they used to have a nook for the women. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not, well, not, not friendly. friendly. Schnook. 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 Oh, yeah. Oh, women were... Yeah. You'd have been a loose woman if you were... I mean, you would be considered... Well, it's like very it was their territory, and how yep. dare we even step yep. foot there. That's the... Well, the <laughs> 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 Is there a clubhouse, you know? Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. Probably haven't seen, if they're out in the country, they so probably they haven't seen a woman for months. They weren't friendly. They were not friendly. So anyway, Spain and... Uh, yeah, no, <laughs> well, you know the definition of a queer Irishman? No. Nourishment refers women to drink. <laughs> <laughs> We can definitely go back to Spain. It's also recorded. Yeah, we're going to go back to Spain. You won't be able to go to Paris in seven years. Are there Irish monasteries in Spain or Irish? Well, um, oh. We do questions in the second half. Um, what institutions, what kind of. Well. We talked about how the Irish saved the world. Well, the Basque are kind of pretty people. Yeah, they are. <laughs> um, the, the connection, I guess what you're asking me, as I understand it, is what's the connection between the Spanish monastic houses, the great monastic houses, and Ireland? And there were huge connections, as you know. Probably the most, the biggest one really was uh, the Franciscans, although that was from Italy, Francis of Assisi, but the Franciscans were very successful, let's say, in in Spain and also in Ireland, um, and the Jesuits, the uh, you know um, Ignatius of Loyola, the Counter Reformation, <coughs> probably, I would think, if anything. That probably was the biggest connection, the Jesuits, um, 
would have, um, because it, it was so political, uh, and again it was the Elizabethan period, so that the Irish uh, kind of uh, embraced the counter-reformation uh, because it, ha it had both the religious and the militaristic um, appeal to the Irish because it was like the Marine Corps of the of the church. The soldiers of Christ. They were the soldiers of Christ. That's exactly what they. That's what they were called. So so um, that that went down well. That attracted a lot of uh, of the fighting spirit of the Irish because. Um, well, they were able to, 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 they had a license, if you like, to, to be a, um, a sword-carrying priest. Um, so uh, that period was very important, and the connection between the Irish and the, French, the Spanish was very powerful on, in that, during that period. Um, <clears throat> probably the most significant uh, period for the Irish um, were the Franciscan period. The, the Irish, as the Irish chieftains became dispossessed and um, scattered, remember there was a whole construct. It, they weren't just farmers and uh, traders and merchants and sailors and soldiers. You had the great academics, the the bards, the traditional um, genealogists, the ones who kept the, the history and the, uh, even the laws of the various chieftains. And again, just as the Galloglass tended to be associated with one particular family, so it was with the, um, uh, the, um, the, the bard families. And each of them tended to have. I was actually reading this recently. Yeah, uh, they they tended to each different group tended to have their own, uh, and they they knew who who they were. I can only think of a few, but certainly the O'Clearys, for instance, were the the uh, traditional Bardic uh, family to the O'Donnells, and each of the different chieftain family and classes would have their... Now, uh, the, the, one of the byproducts of the destruction of the chieftainships was they were out of a job. They, they no longer had a chieftain to be the secretary to, the um, keeper of the, the traditions and the laws and stuff. And they, a lot of them uh, followed their chieftains to Spain and became instant celebrities in the universities down there because they were extremely learned men and um, which paralleled what happened when Christianity first came to, to, to Ireland because remember it wasn't so much Christianity that came to Ireland but classical learning it was Greek and Roman that came Christi Christianity was simply was the the bearer of it if, if, but classicism so, so they embraced that um, and that's how they basically saved civilization because what they did was they saved classical Christian civilization the Roman world had become Christianized so therefore if you save Christianity you save the, you save the Roman world so Christianity and Rome uh, Rome is are identical really you know they truly are uh, even to this day um, but what I find very interesting is the various um, families that uh, turned up in Spain in the various universities and they they were like almost instantly became the uh, chancellors and the presidents of, of the various universi universities. So they were huge. Did, it, did a lot of, um, no, most people here are familiar with the wine of peace. Uh, that was after what, 1798? 1690. 1690. A lot of them went to Spain. Mostly France. Mostly France, yeah. Um, not very many to Spain. The Wild Geese mostly went to Spain. 
uh, Sarsfield died, 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 died at Luden, you know, uh, um, in the service of, of the French king. Um, but in those days, Rome, uh, Europe was a whole mess of feuding princes. The idea even of a king wasn't very strong because there, there wasn't very many kings. You'd ha almost have to go back to Henry II, the Plantagenet, to have any powerful, really united uh, kingdoms. But anyway, yeah, the wild geese typically went to, they, they went almost exclusively to France. Um, but um, the, the, um, uh, the old Bardic families went to Spain and culturally they were as important to Spain